Uh, today we will be discussing bond cement. Uh, this is the chemical formula of uh, bond cement. It is very difficult to remember that, but we get an important information about what is happening in polymerization uh, from this formula. We can see that uh, the carbon carbon double bonds are converted into single bonds in polymerization. So, what is bond cement? Bond cement or polymethyl metacrylate is a composite synthetic substance used in orthopedics. It can be described by its biochemical and uh, biomechanical properties. Its main component is polymethyl metacrylate. It is viscoelastic and functions as ground and as a filler. So, what are the mechanical properties? It is good in compression. It is good in compression, moderate in shear strength and poor in tensile strength. It is brittle, not sensitive and the Young's modulus of elasticity is between cancellous and the cortical wall. It is viscoelastic and undergoes creep, stress relaxation and hysteresis. Uh, creep is time dependent deformation when subjected to a constant uh, stress. If we plot the time against the strain, if this is the constant uh, stress, there will be time dependent deformation. This is called creep. What is stress relaxation? It is a time dependent decrease in the stress required to maintain a constant strain. Hysteresis is the loading and unloading curve not following the same path. So we can see the stress relaxation curve here. So this is the constant strain, this is time and the stress there is time dependent decrease in the force required to maintain a constant uh, strain. Whereas in hysteresis we can see that the loading and the unloading curves are following different paths. So what are the uses of bond cement? It can be roughly classified into use as a fixation and use as a space filler. When we use the cement as a fixation, it is actually a grout rather than an adhesive. It fills the gap between the processes and the bond and the mechanical interlocking is happening on hardening. The uses of bond cement as a space filler include non-malignant lesions, osteoporotic vertebral collapse, bone loss in revision, arthroplasty, eradication of uh, infection. So what are the ingredients? It has got a liquid component and a powder component. The liquid component is the monomer and contain the accelerator and the inhibitor. The inhibitor is hydroquinone. The powder contains the polymer. So it is also having the radio opacifier either a zirconium or barium sulfate. It has got initiator that is benzyl peroxide. Antibiotic that is amino glycoside usually. Uh, dye. If you are seeing a green colored uh, cement, that is because of the presence of uh, chlorophyll. Uh, this is an often asked question uh, in your uh, part one. We can easily remember the polymer part by remembering. Instead of uh, PMMA, we can remember PVBA, that is uh, the polymer contain the polymethyl metacrylate, barium sulfate, benzyl peroxide, which is the initiator, and the antibiotic. So, if we go back uh, to the first slide, we can see what is happening in the polymerization reaction. It is an exothermic energy inefficient uh, reaction. The carbon carbon double bonds are broken down to carbon carbon single bonds to give long chain polymer largely linear and free from cross linking.
they has got lower tensile strength because of this relative absence of uh, cross linking. If you are using antibiotic, what are the prerequisites? It should be heat stable, it should be polymicrobial, it should have long elusive period of 6 to 8 weeks, it should not create too much porosities within the uh, bond cement, reducing the mechanical properties. What are the stages of the curing process? We have got the mixing stage, which is shown in the red, then we have got dough time. Then we have got the setting time and the working time. We will come back to this later. Total hardening will be taking place over a period of 24 hours. Here we can see how we can graphically represent the same curing uh, process. If we represent uh, the time in seconds from 0, 30, 120, 300, 600, and 900. And in the y axis, the temperature, the ambient temperature is 21 degree in the theater. The setting time, that is T set, is 57 degrees. Then we have got the T max, that is maximum temperature, the cement is attaining. Uh, that is 93 degree. Okay, uh, so when we start mixing, the temperature will be remaining constant until to around uh, 500 seconds. The first 30 seconds, the first 30 seconds is called the mixing of the sandy phase. In this, in this phase, the cement will be adhering. Uh, to your fingers, then it will be getting smoother. And uh, first, in 120 minutes, it is called uh, the Duffy phase. Then, after 120 seconds until 600 seconds, that is the working phase. Here, you can easily mold the cement and uh, fill it uh, into your vacuum mixer. Once the time reaches 600 uh, seconds. Uh, the temperature will be shooting up uh, and uh, the setting temperature of 57 degrees Celsius will be reached quickly and uh, the temperature will be further shooting up to 93 degrees Celsius that is the T max and uh, gradually it will be coming down and over a period of 24 hours the cement will be uh, setting it will be good if you can draw this graph when when somebody asks you about uh, uh, what happens in the uh, curing process. Only constant is the mixing time. Other phases depend on the temperature, handling and the mixing. Increased humidity increases the Duffy phase. What are the complications of using a bond cement? Often asked question is bond cement implantation syndrome. Then you have got thermal necrosis, chemical necrosis, third body wear. Cement mantle defects, hypersensitivity reactions. So, a few words about uh, mantle defect. Barak and Harris has classified that into A to D. A means complete whiteout, means uh, there is no mantle defect. D means complete blackout, uh, no cement at the tip, or 100% absence of uh, cement. B and C are in between. If the radiolescency is less than 50 percentage, it is B. If it is more than 50 percentage, it is uh, C. Cementing techniques uh, can be classified into various generations. First, second, third and fourth. The first generation is hand mixing with finger pack. Second generation, we are using gun, plug and canal duration. Third generation, we have got vacuum mixing. Pulse lavage and uh, distal centralizer with pressurization. If you are using proximal centralizer, that is called uh, fourth generation. So, you may be sometimes asked, what is your cement of choice? You should not tell a particular brand when such a question is asked. So, you may tell about the viscosity. Sometimes you may need a high viscosity cement or a low viscosity cement depending upon the 
particular use and whether it should be colored or not. We may prefer a colored cement, especially if it is used as a filler. And the antibiotic of your choice should be taught. Uh, that is often taught as dendamycin. Uh, the we have to tell which viscosity cement you are using, low viscosity or high viscosity. I will use a colored cement with the gentamycin. Uh, my cement should have zirconium or barium sulfate as uh, the opacifier. Should be sterilized using ethylene oxide. NJR data, THR, TKR, revision for 10 years should be less than 4 years with that particular cement. May contain traces of peanut oil sometimes. We should be asking about uh, allergic reactions to peanut oil uh, in your uh, consent. What is born cement implantation syndrome? It occurs at time of implantation characterized by hypotension, hypoxia, cardiac arrhythmia and uh, cardiac arrest. Causes are thought to be exothermic reaction, air fat embolism or toxic hypersensitivity or anaphylaxic reaction. So the cause is not uh, well delineated. That could be multifactorial. The prevention measures should be uh, the prevention measures should be from the side of anesthetist and also from the surgeon. The anesthetist should oxygenate, evacuate fluid and monitor the patient. The surgeon uh, should be using pulse lavage, should be bird brushing, should be brushing the medullary canal, mix the cement in vacuum, should bend the femur and uh, attempt a retrograde cementing with the gun. There is a recommendation for a three-stage uh, process to reduce the incidence of this problem in patients undergoing cemented hemiotherplasty for hip fractures, proper identification, preparation of the team, and a specific operative procedure. What we discussed earlier was the specific intraoperative precaution. <coughs> a few words about uh, plaster of Paris or gypsum plaster. It's produced by heating gypsum to about uh, 300 uh, degree Fahrenheit. Calcium sulfate. 2H2O when heated up becomes calcium sulfate half H2O and uh, water is released as steam. When dry plaster powder is mixed with water, it reforms into gypsum. The setting of unmodified plaster starts about 10 minutes after mixing and is complete in about 45 minutes but not fully set for 72 hours. If plaster or gypsum is heated above uh, 266 degree Fahrenheit, hemihydrate is formed which will also reform as gypsum if mixed with water. I included plaster of Paris in this discussion uh, because it is sometimes uh, often confused uh, with bond cement.